Okay, Anthony, part two. Uh, this is what I'm really interested in. I always ask the professional punters, and it, nobody seems to be able to really explain it, but W <laughs> says, can you, learn, can you learn how to price a market or sport without working in the industry? And if so, how would you go about starting? What my starting point would be now if I didn't work in the industry is to try and find out who who's winning money and just try and tag along with them and just try and learn from them. I think it's it's really difficult to give an answer to that question on in two minutes and try and make it interesting and make it snappy. And I think I think you just learn from being around smart people, like I said the last time to you. Like I think you just pick stuff up, the nuances of what they can see that you probably can't put it down onto paper, really. It's a, it's a tough one. Like when, I'm, when I used to look at horses, for example, horse races, and even greyhounds as well, what I used to do was just try and look for mispriced favourites, just basically because if I can find a mispriced favourite, I know that it's going to be taking up too much margin in the book one way or another, and then there's some margin left to play with where there has to be something else overpriced at a bigger price so I used to I used to focus on favorites and just try and this is when I was starting off I used to focus on favorites and just try and work out if I could see if, the, if there's a six to four shot that should be five to two well that's going to give me an angle into the race because there's something has to be overpriced into into a hundred percent book or 105 percent book or something like that um I think there's all different ways you can cut it to be honest with you just different sports different things matter my, my advice would be, and it's, a, it's probably a crap answer, but my advice would be just to try and really tr try and... Everyone wants to project that they're winning money these days. You just go on Twitter, everyone's winning money. Come and follow me, I'm winning money, blah, blah, blah. I think you just need to... A big, big skill is just actually working out who has edges and then who has edges that are scalable and then just try and fucking learn off them is what I'd be doing. And I'm still trying to do it now. I'm still trying to learn off people. I'd love to meet people that... Are, if I'm here and the pecking order, I want to meet people who are here that know more than me about certain things. And the only way you're going to learn it is by either offering them something or if you get someone nice enough to, to that lets you see them and tail them or if you, can, if you can put on bets for someone who's smart and you and stuff like that. Every, no, no, all the smart guys struggle to get bets on to a degree. Um, if you can get bets on for someone who's smarter than you, and you know for a fact that they're smart and they're going to pay you if they get beat, et cetera. You can just see the bets that go through the accounts and just try and learn off them. Why has he bet that at that price? Why has he done this? And you can just try and work it out yourself, basically. But there's not many people who are going to spoon feed it to you, to be honest with you, which I think a few people seem to have wanted from my first couple of videos with you. Like uh, the, the, the goose that lays the golden egg is not for sale and you know whatever that phrase is like it's uh you've got to you've got to have a bit of cop on and learn it yourself as well and just try and pick things up off people i think okay this is from tom weeks uh as a percentage how much of your bets get put on through shops yeah that's a good question i don't know <laughs> what would i guess um i 20% maybe, 20% maybe, but I actually don't know. I don't record it. I deal with the runners and settle up with them, but I just don't, I don't, I don't separate the two basically. It's just all one, one big, one big mash of numbers basically at the end of the week. Okay. Gareth Owen would like to know, are most of your bets or, stra or strategies long-term bets for the seasonal competition or is it more the constant weekly bets? Uh, both. I think there's bigger edges in the long-term stuff. For example, football. Football, I know there's some people on Twitter and that, Nick Goff and a few of the other people from from previously would probably bet football anti-post stuff. And I've seen a few people on my timeline since who bet football anti-post. Um, it's probably getting more efficient this year. I've had loads of anti-post bets this year as usual, but I probably haven't had as many as I have in previous years. So it's probably getting slightly more efficient. There's less bookies price in certain markets. Uh, everyone seems to be running a mile from the championship relegation market and League Two relegation because of football finances <laughs> and things like that. Um, but I think you can factor that in. <laughs> Just go on the AFL website and find out who's got conditions against them or who's being investigated and factor it into your price. It shouldn't be that hard to put a price on, on a market. Um, but yeah, I think there's bigger edges in the long-term stuff. 
it's probably big edges week to week in football. It just depends on how early you want to play in the week. So if you want, if your bet's 200 quid and there's a game on Saturday and you can get a price on after the Tuesday night matches finish, fine. You're going to, you're going to have a big edge on some stuff, but it comes back to that scale thing again. If you want to have 200 quid and move a price, good luck. I would probably want to bet at quarter past two and have a, a bit more than 200 quid on. So um, I'm just looking for edges that are in more liquid markets, I think. Okay, Tommy Two Fingers. Uh, when pricing up a market, we know you take into account form, race course, jockey, etc. But how do you add these things up to arrive at the odds? Do you add weights to them? Like for every win, they get a plus one. For a fall, they get a minus one. Just in pr- general pricing. You don't want your secrets, just in general. No, I, I wouldn't do that, to be honest with you, no. Um, jockey is an interesting variable that I think I've, I've heard from different people. It seems to be quite divisive how, from smart people, how many people factor in the jockey and how many don't. Like it's, It seems to be the one where people are a little bit more... I think it's a big... I think Personally, I think it's a big variable, but it's probably hard to quantify or harder to quantify. Uh, I'd probably feel a little bit of a fraud giving you answers on horse racing because I wouldn't be I wouldn't be the most adept. I'm okay at horse racing. It's not my strongest sport. Uh, I love it. I w- I've, I don't watch it as much as I used to, but I I think I understand it and I follow it. Um, but there's probably better people to ask those questions about horse racing to me. Just the system he described, uh, add one, minus one. No, I don't do any of that. I wouldn't do any of that. I don't know anyone who does that. Um for me, it all depends on like like ground. It'd be the, the ground is the most important thing, just in general. And then you're just trying to work out. When I'd be doing the videos for the horse racing, I'd be just trying to work out which horse, just your basic things, which horse maybe was given a, an easy enough ride, or your subjective stuff, with, and then more objective stuff like which horse went for a run, didn't find a gap, and stuff stuff like that. Um, where things went wrong or the pace of a race just wasn't run to suit and things like that um, and I'm basically just looking for something about the race that's coming up that may have been concealed either on purpose or by accident in in previous form lines basically where I can justify that a price is too big basically based on based on what I can see and that's just tends to be just tends to be it in general Okay, now I wasn't going to uh, give you any anonymous ones, but this one, I suppose people want to know it. Um, I'm going to excuse my ignorance. I don't know what the second one stands for. What is your ROI, return on investment, and ROC, I don't know what that is, per year? Uh, ROI, I probably don't know it exactly. I'd guess about 6%, but I don't know. Um, I don't know how much it is exactly. I'm going to guess about 6 or 7%. Some sports would be less than that. Football matches would be less than that, but they're to higher volume. Um, there'd be some ROIs that are decent double figures, like high teens, but probably to less volume. Um, ROC. <laughs> I actually don't know what that means myself as well. I've, uh, I'm probably not the best finance background as well, so if someone can clarify that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, ROI about six or seven percent overall, I'd say, would be my guess. Okay. Um, Paul Fitzgerald, plus EV. This is another one I don't understand. Bets to good money. Um, well before markets harden, with the subsequent operational workload and hassle it involves, uh, seems the modus operandi here. Um, where are you opinion wise on playing in the last 10 minutes of a pre off racing football market? Uh, apologies if my internet's cut, cutting off there a little bit. It was, it was showing us unstable there. Um, no, I think I think that's probably wrong, Paul. To be honest with you, I'm trying to. I think I would have been that guy originally. Now I'm more trying to get closer to the off in football uh, and racing as well. In, in particular, I don't bet racing early. To be honest with you, I just don't do it. It just doesn't interest me. I can beat it, but it's it's a lot of hassle, like you say. Um, <laughs> So I think as you just just going parking back to what I was saying before, just I think the more money you get to to get the money down, I think you need to be. I think everyone everyone that builds a bankroll starts gravitating closer to the off just to to scale basically, um, and that's what I'm trying to do for everything. Okay, now Michael Verity would like to know how do you stay hungry to keep getting 
getting it after year after year what's your ultimate motivation and also another question in with it what's the longest break from punting you've taken in the last 15 years and do you think breaks can help freshen you up and refocus you yeah that's a great question um how do you stay hungry and getting it year after year i think uh I think acquiring more baggage and a higher standard of living just keeps you on your toes as well, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, you're just always trying to, I think just as you you probably end up spending more than you used to do. And then you, I think that keeps the pressure on to a certain extent as well. Um, breaks. Oh, this is one thing I'm probably not great at, to be honest with you. I go on holiday a good bit, but like I was in Portugal recently enough and uh, I'm just looking at, I'm still trying to, I'm, I am switched off to an extent and the kids keep you active and stuff like that. But like, um, yeah, I've always got my eye on it. I can't, I, I struggle to switch off basically. And it's probably, it's probably not the healthiest uh, position to be in. I, I wish I could just uh, go out for, I wish I could go away for two weeks. And I always say it when I go on holiday, I'm always like, I'm going to leave my phone at home. And I just never do. I, I just can't seem to make that break from actually switching off. I left my phone at home. I've been borrowing the missus phone on a Saturday afternoon, checking how Rotherham are getting on in League One or something like that. So uh, it's probably it's it's probably a bit of an illness and fairness. I struggle to take a break, basically. Okay, this is another anonymous one, but it's a fair question. When when do you classify something as an edge? Uh, just when the price is bigger than what I make it, and then it just depends on how big that edge is to how big you bet. Yeah, it's just I'm setting my own prices and then just trying to work out. It's, it's one thing that people might think I'm wrong here. And I know Ben has, Ben's commented about me playing bookmaker and stuff like that. But the way I see it, right, is you make something a price. These are my prices. And if I'm a better and I'm a, and I'm a punter, the way I see it is I'm looking for something where I'm getting 10% bigger than what I make it. And I'm happy to have that bet as my edge. I think playing bookmaker for me, is 10 percent the other side of that line whereas i make some at a price i make some at eight to one and someone wants to take 15 to two that's i'm going to play bookmaker because it's it's two sides of the same coin basically if, if my key is to get my prices right that's my big thing get my prices right and if the bigger than my prices bet them if the smaller than my prices and someone else wants to bet them lay them and then that's just basically my opinion on it so i think as i i differ to Ben on his opinion of punter and bookmaker. For me, it's about prices and just if they're too big or too small, uh, backing or laying them. And I think that that's just that's just my opinion on it. Okay. Uh, Win and each way laid would like to know, how do you identify the difference between your edge, no longer being an edge versus a losing run? It's <laughs> uh, a good question. I think a lot of it is probably what price it closes at. Um, for some stuff, so horse racing, if I'm betting horses at 20 to one and the bet for SP in 30 to one, and I'm doing that over and over and over again, I'm, I'm probably in trouble. Um, I think results, good, positive and negative can mask how good you are. The closing line is pretty, is pretty good in a lot of things. And I've said it before to people like we all, like we all have instances where we think a bet for SP is wrong and things like that. Um, or a closing line in a particular individual game is wrong and fair enough, we can debate that. But like, I think over a collective of 10,000 events or something, the closing line is going to be pretty much bang on overall, averaged out. And I think if you're not beating it, I think you're going to struggle. Even if you're running good on your bets, I think you probably want to be just ahead of the market, just in general, at, at, at the off, um, over a big sample of bets. And I think that determines... If, I, if I'm betting 20 to one shots and the bet for SP in 14 and I lose 30 bets in a row, I'm not too fussed about it, to be honest with you, because I think that the market, I think the market is going to correct over time if there's something I'm missing. And if it's going off 14, I think I think the individual result is, is less applicable and it's more about how I'm managing my bank to stay in the game, basically, is, is what I think. 